Hi, my name is David Parker and I'm the founder and owner of Be Visual Limited, an independent Visio consultancy since 1998 and I've been an MVP for Microsoft Visio for the last 15 years. At the end of my last video I left you with a little bit of a teaser because I showed how the width of a shape can actually change the colour when you move it and change the width. I did this by changing the formula in the shape sheet of the process shape. If I scroll down in the shape sheet down here, we can see that I put in this formula equal to width in there. That may be sensible in, in some occasions, but I don't think it's that sensible in this particular instance. So I'm going to show you a little bit more about how you can add a bit more smartness to that. This particular shape that I've got an instance of that process master which if you remember it comes from the process master that was in the basic flowchart shape stencil has got some data already uh, cached into it so if we go to the view task panes and choose shape data it will open up the shape data panel or window that could also have been opened up from the the data and here we've got the shape data window there that we can see there. So we've got this thing here called status, prop.status, and in there we've got a number of different values that can be put in or selected from this list. And at the moment when I do that, nothing is actually happening or apparently happening within uh, the colour of the shape. Wouldn't it be nice if we could make it do that? So how do we make it do that? Well, First of all, if we scroll up in the shape sheet here, we can see here we've got this prop.status and in there it's got the format, which are these values you saw in the drop down, and it's got a type of one. What does that type, sorry, type of four? What does that type of four mean? Well, I can actually see that if I go in here, it says type list var. Or if I was in the Visio interface and I do a uh, click on the shape data, right mouse click there and did define shape data, we can go down to the status there and we can see it says variable list. Actually, for what I'm about to show you, I'm going to change this to a fixed list. You can see there's a number of different data types I could use, but the fixed list means that it's got to be one in that particular list. So I'm going to change that to a fixed list there. And I now can do OK. And oh, before I do that, notice it's actually wiped out when I change uh, the formats in there. So let me just cancel that for a moment and go back in and do the same thing. Because uh, I know what I'm about to do, I'm just going to copy that. So you see in there, in that format there, it's got that. Now I'm going to go into my fixed list and put in the same list that we've got in there. And now I have to choose one from this list, where if it was a, a variable list, I could type in anything else which is not in this list and it will get added to the list but I want it to be uh, an absolute value. And you'll also notice down now that in the shape sheet here, I've got in a type one uh, and the format is as we put it in and notice this little formula here, which is interesting because what it's saying is that at the moment I've got, uh, and this is a zero based list, I've chosen the, the first, which is index zero in that list. And notice when I change this value here of the status, that number changes. So this is the key to what I'm about to show you. Now, I could make these changes on this shape instance, but the smartest thing to do is to make these changes on the master, the local master here, that is the process one. So I'm going to uh, reject that now, close that down, and I'm going to go into the process master because I want to make these changes in the process master and get those instances to all have the same property or uh, behavior. So like before, I'm now going to go into define uh, shape data and go down to the status, copy the status, change it to a fixed list and put that in there. All right. So we've now got a fixed list and it's going to mean that we have to select one of those. Okay, now let's go into the, the shape sheet behind this. All right, now it's going to all get a little bit confusing there, so let's hide that one and we'll just focus on the master editor window itself. 
And notice that these are all blue now, these rows, not just a mixture of black and blue, because I'm not inheriting from something. This is the master. And there we can see we've got this list there, and it's got the chosen one there. So what I'm thinking here is that I want a different colour for each one of those statuses. Right? Now, I know there is data graphics in Visio Professional and Visio Online Plan 2, but Visio uh, Standard does not have data graphics in it. So this technique would work in whichever version of Visio you've got. So here is a, the shape data section, which is represented visually in the shape data window. We've also got another section, which I think every single one of the masters that comes built in with Visio has already got, is this thing called user-defined cells. If you haven't got a user-defined cell section, you can actually use that by using the insert section. And if it wasn't grayed out, I could insert the user-defined cells there. So I've got this user-defined section here where I can basically put some formulas into it. So I'm just going to go now and do insert another row in there. In fact, I'm going to go do three rows because I'm going to uh, do something, hopefully, uh, clever, which you'll understand here. First thing is I'm going to put in my list of all those status names in there. Oh, I think I'll spell status correctly. All right, and that status names list is going to be this list here. So I'm just going to copy that from there and I put that into there. I, I do this normally because I want, uh, sometimes I update that list from another source, a data source, and, and I want to know where I can go to for that. And I may have more than one thing um, referencing that list. Also, because I'm going to put in a list down here, which is a color for each one of those, and it's nicer to have that in the same place so they can see what's going on. So if I think, uh, well, I create something here called status colors, Okay, so now I've got status colors in there and I start putting in a list. Now that list is, I mentioned about the color map there, you know, two is red, three is green, etc. But you're actually supposed to be using the RGB color references or use the uh, uh, cyan, magenta, yellow, the CMYs. Uh, I'm happy to use the RGBs. So in the first one where nothing is selected let's just make it white so that's two five five two five five oh, two five five all right so that's the, be the first one so how do we want to put this list in well you notice that the the list above has got a semicolon as a separator between the list items what we've created here is actually a a reference to a color Right. And we're doing this in English. And in English, we actually do use a comma as the delimiter between the numbers in the RGB. But in some other languages, they use a semicolon as a separator between the numbers in the RGB reference. So I don't want to use the semicolon as a separator. I want to use something else which is not usual. And I'm going to use the pipe character in this instance. OK, so do I want to do this and then put in a pipe, uh, whoops, uh, which is the pipe character, which is here, and then type that in? Well, I'm not sure that this is going to be the best way of doing it, but the next thing I want in there is grey. OK, and I get an error in the formula. OK. So I don't want to just put in the pipe in this way to separate this list. I'm going to actually turn this into a bit of text in there by using the concatenate character, the ampersand. And I've put that character, the pipe, in there, as you can see, uh, enclosed between double quotes. So now it'll accept that. And I've got the first two values in my color list, which is uh, before the semicolon in that one above, which is white, and then the next one is grey. And I'm just going to fill it in the rest. So I'm just pasting these values into there, and we've now got a list of colour values 
that now refers to the ones above. So we're going to have a, a green and blue in that. OK, so no, still nothing happens when the status changes. So how do I do that? Well, what I normally do here is I have a status IDX, which is going to be basically the reverse of that formula that we've got there. I'm just going to get a number in here from 0 to 5, which will give me something that I can use as a lookup. So I'm going to use lookup there. And what do I want? Well, I can just actually type it in, or I can just click on, I want to look up that value in, in what? Well, in that list. So now I've got that there. And if I just change that, say, change the values now, you will see that when I go and change the status, that that number is changing. So we've got a number being changed in there. And we've got the, uh, the index number being there. Now I can use that index number there to look up the color. So we'll go down to the fill foreground here, which is currently showing that in there, which is that sort of taint of green. And I can put in there index. Now, what do I want to put in? Now I could go and click on it above, or I can just type in user dot. I want to use that status index in there. And I want to get it from what list? I want to get it from the status colors. OK, and what delimiter did I use? I used a pipe kiter as a delimiter. OK, so now look, it's changed to white. If I go and change the status here, gray, yellow, green, red, blue. You might not like the color choice, but we've now got the basics. One last thing I want to do here is I want to prevent someone from actually using the, the normal formatting tools for that color because that color in this case is based on a status value. So I'm going to go to this formula here and wrap that in a guard. Now that I've got a guard on that, uh, that protects that from somebody changing the fill foreground. OK, so I've now got that. And if I was to now close down my master here, that should now be inherited by all of my instances. OK, these are all blue here because I left that on the default of being, let's see, waiting on input. Maybe I should have left that on the default of nothing yet has been applied to it. Close it. And you can see that that now is inherited. So what about this one? Well, this one is, if you remember, I modified that one locally. So if I was to go and look at this shape sheet in here, we can see that it's got in black the ones that I entered into the master, and they are all inherited. Okay, and here uh, I'm going to. Uh, well, I should actually do that. I've put in an equal sign, hit return, and it now forces it to inherit. Uh, I can leave that as it is because that's something that you modify in the instance. Now we're going to go down to the, the fill format, which is still using that width formula, but I want to reset it now to inherit the one from the master. So I'm just going to type in an equal sign, hit return, and now that one has been fixed, if you like, and it's gone back to what it was. I've got waiting on input there, change to in progress, etc. So now we have got a smart formula for the, the color of this. Now, it, it could have been the F text color. It could have been the line color. It could have been the line thickness. It could have been, if it was a more complex shape with a group shape with things inside it, it could have been an icon that appears. But this is the principle, really, of how you create smart masters that are responding to your data. There is one thing that I should have done in my master, and because I'm a consultant, I like to get this right, is in the shape sheet of here, I re now remember that I didn't actually inherit the list that I put into my status name into here. So I've got the list in two places. Well, that's not good news, so I'm just putting in equals in here and go and touch on that status names. And now whenever that status names get updated, then this format um, here will get updated as well. So it's all just in one place, and this will be inherited by all of the instances. 
So potentially I could write some code which pushed in a whole load of status names and a whole load of colors in there to make my uh, shape behave in the way that I want it to do. So let's close that down there. Now that, believe it or not, is the principle that almost all of my development of smart shapes goes by. If you'd like to learn more about integrating data with Visio, then please follow these links to go and get my book about visualizing data with Visio 2016 and 19 and Visio Online Plan 2. I've also got a white paper about linking Visio with Power BI. So, thank you for watching this video and I hope you'll watch my next one soon.